Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All of our guests today brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. Delaney's okay, Taryn Langley inbox just before we get to uh, John Shannon. Yes, Donnie, Black Swan is a great movie, but I prefer the Black Swan Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. And if you're familiar with that series, you know what uh, he or she is talking about. Yeah. Unsigned text, by the way. Sign those uh, texts into the Delaney's OK Tire in the in inbox. We want to give you uh, credit. Uh, we give credit right now uh, to our next guest for uh, for showing up. Oh, yeah. NHL analyst, co-host of the Bob McCowan uh, podcast. It's John Shannon. John, thanks for doing this. How are you, sir? Good, boys. And just so there's no confusion about taping or anything like that, I just thought I'd, <laughs> I'd put it. Oh, thank you. Oh, very good. We are live. Oh, thank you. Thank and, you. And, 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 and by the way, thank you very much for the mug. It's very oh. greatly appreciated. Oh. Yeah. And it's got my name on the back. That's it. right. Look at that. That's right. fantastic. See? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. You know? yeah. Only the best I had for to you. Do the beverage, but you guys got the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have no idea what's in this mug. Yeah. Hey, uh, John, before we well, talk. Didn't you always wonder that on, didn't you always wonder that on Carson? Don't well. You? Did well, you the thing. I wonder what, what they were feeding the guys at Carson. Okay, we're th this. Uh, I, I, I'm going to lump you in with me. This is an old man conversation. I always remember Johnny Carson <laughs> coming back from break yep. and putting out his cigarette. Yeah, that's right. Cigarette, and Lord, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it was a cigarette anyway. Yeah, what was in that? Uh, well, in with that Carson, mug? with Carson, you'd never know. And yeah. and, and, the, and the guy after him, Tom Schneider, the. Yeah, the smoke would be billowing out of always. the ice and off of his cigarette uh, all the time. Always, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, let, let's go down a, another old school uh, road before we talk about hockey today. But fifty years ago, Wednesday, Game Eight, seventy-two Summit Series, uh, heroics from Paul Henderson. What do you What do you remember? Where were you? I was in my grade 10 social studies class at South Okanagan Secondary School. I had convinced my father to uh, let us all watch the hockey games because we he was the principal of the high school and we had a big argument the night before. Uh, and uh, at, at five to three for the for the Soviets after the second period, the teacher bet against the class. He bet this. He bet the Russians were going to win. and was laughing at us and we got so mad at him. We kicked him out of the room and then we watched and obviously the heroics of. Yvonne Cornoyer and Phil Esposito and Paul Henderson. Yeah, and and you know what? I remember skipping out of school that day to, uh, to watch it. I was in Burnaby, and I wasn't the only yeah. one, and no one cared. Yeah, every everybody no. was. It didn't matter if you showed up at school. Everybody was watching so, that game. Our country had twenty two million people in it at that time fifty mm. years ago. Twenty two million. Sixteen million people are yep. estimated to have watched wow. the game. Yeah, sixteen wow. million. When yep. you think about it. Oof, unbelievable. Well, the unbelievable part is six million people didn't watch didn't it. Watch who were those people? I didn't know them. I'll tell you that. Hey, uh, <laughs> Francesco Aquilini with a, a messy family situation that's gone public. Uh, John, what, yeah. what, what's his, from what you know, what's his reputation uh, in NHL ownership circles? Well, I think it's pretty solid. Mm. I mean, I, I think that, um, and really the, the, the credibility factor for Francesco uh, at the league level really came about um, with the Stanley Cup uh, run, you know, 2000 and th that run in 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. and then in 11. And, and so the, the, in, in many ways, that's 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 how he's viewed at the, at the board meetings. I've, I've been to board meetings with Francesco in them. I've uh, you know, I've mm -hmm. been outside the room too when Fr when Francesco's there. I, I I mean, he's viewed as uh, uh, when you think about where Canadian teams are in their in how much revenue they contribute to the rest of the league. I think he's viewed very very much so uh, as a solid citizen. Yeah, I mean, the, I would tell you right now, the only time in in that that uh, that realm is when he and Tom Gallardi were fighting over who really owned the Canucks. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. all of a sudden Tom owns one and Francesco yeah. owns one. Yeah. But when you see an event like this uh, with ownership, uh, uh, John, 
around the NHL. We just went through uh, uh, stuff with owners. We've gone through stuff with the Phoenix Suns owner. He's been told to sell the team uh, by the NBA. But it, optically, it doesn't look too good, though, John. No. I mean, it's it, – well, first of all, it's embarrassing um for everyone involved um uh, secondly i you know i you know there has to be some concerns uh of the allegations um and and i do think that the nhl um is very very um aware of the optics of any of these types of things so there would be concern um the other thing is i i can assure you that uh, uh when a court case like this is going on a discovery occurs that the, the, the NHL would be very much aware of it long before it becomes public. Um, and that, uh, that, uh, Mr. Bettman and Daly, and then the, the, the you know, Jeremy Jacobs, who's the chairman of the board would be made aware of what was going to be said. Uh, and they would plan accordingly and try to make sure that they were as supportive as possible of, of Francesco and, and doing some due diligence otherwise. John Maple Leafs, Matt Murray, a uh, lot of questions. Is he the guy? Is he going to be the guy? Can he be the guy? He's in a hot Canadian market. How do you see that goaltending situation playing out in Toronto? Well, I'm I'm on record, Rick, that I think by Christmas time, Ilya Samsonov will be the starting goalie. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, and and that's not a knock at Matt Murray. I just think that's the upside of Samsonov. Right. Um. Uh, he's he's and and just like a few players that we're seeing sign one year deals or. Uh, or take PTOs in certain situations. Samson was betting on himself with a short-term deal to say, I can go back to where I was. When he came over from the Soviet Union, or from Russia, rather, um, you know, this guy was supposed to be as mm-hmm. good as Shesterkin. He he came with a great reputation yep. uh, and has just never reached that level. And, and Brian McClellan and the Capitals grew um, intolerant of him. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't think anybody knows publicly, but th- this is a chance for Samsonov to prove that he is a great athlete and can be a, a good goalie. As far as Matt Murray, Rick, uh, boy, oh boy, uh, mm-hmm. y- you know, pressure is pressure is pressure, and there are there are tough cities to play goal in in this league. Vancouver's one, uh, Toronto's one, Detroit's one of those tough towns too, um, and if if Matt Murray even wavers for a moment the panic will set in, and I'm yeah. not sure he's ready for that. Yeah, throw Philadelphia on that list uh, as well. Hey, uh, John, Ilya Mikheyev, as uh, we talk a little bit more about Toronto here, um, was he considered, and he hasn't played an 82-game season in his career, it hasn't been all that long, but was he considered an injury-prone player with the Leafs? No, no, not at all. And and I, I don't think this injury – um, is serious, okay. you know, and talking to the people inside the organization, I, you know, remember we're, you know, games count the, the week of October 12th, Yeah, you know, um, just, you know, be, be in shape, be ready to go. There's no question that this guy's going to be a contributor to this hockey club for a long period of time. Um, and, and with his speed, he will attract a ton of fans, avid fans, hmm. uh, you know, at the arena, the, this guy can, this guy can fly. Uh, he does have an offensive upside. You know, one of the problems in Toronto and why Toronto knew that they weren't be able to keep him is because he was that good and they had no space. Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted to keep him. They just don't have any dollars. Uh, and and they knew that they cryptically, they knew in February and March that we're not mm-hmm. going to be able to keep him because he was going to, you know, he was going to demand that much money and he got it. John, uh, Bruce Boudreau named 16th most handsome coach in the National Hockey League. <laughs> Can he retire now? Was that from the CNIB? <laughs> yeah, that's I what mean, Bruce said. I, I, love, yeah. I, I love Bruce. I love Bruce. But 16? Seriously? 16? Yeah, but who were they asking? Like, yeah. who were they asking that's is the key. A, that's my point. It, it could have been. I think it was the Canadian National Institute <laughs> for the Blind. <laughs> Bruce said something uh, like that. Keep in mind that, uh, and look, listen, you're not talking to two Brad Pitts here, all right? Three Brad Brad Pitts here. Daryl Sutter did finish second. So Bruce was yeah. 14 <laughs> spots behind him. Yeah, I don't so, get the Sutter. So dude. there's that. You'd be number one on that list, John. For media, for media. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm too old to be on any list. 
Yeah. I have the gray hair like Lisa Laflamme. It didn't stop for me getting let go to. So. Yeah. Well, at least you've got some left, unlike others in the studio. <laughs> John, thanks for this. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey, listen. Oh, go. Sorry, sorry. sorry to do this. Just, uh, and I don't want to end it on a downer, but, uh, uh, you know, Stan Smeal is one of the great people yeah. in our game. Not good people, great people in our game. Yeah. And, and yep. Stan's gone through some tough times this week, and I just wanted to pass on my sympathies to, to a great friend. Uh, for the passing of his wife, Jennifer. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, and, and and even in my first few years in pro, Stan Smeal was one of the great people to deal with, still is one of the yep. great people to deal with, and I'm thinking of him. Yeah, yep. well said, John. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Yep. Next week.